Hello and welcome to today's lesson on transformers, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE separate science physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at explaining how a transformer works. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what a transformer is, detail the basic properties of a transformer and explain how a transformer works, which links into the following part of the GCSE separate science physics specification 4.7.3.4 transformers. So this is the setup of the national grid in the United Kingdom. You have a step up transformer, which increases the potential difference and you've got a high voltage transmission cable you then got the step down transformer to decrease the potential difference so a step up transformer is found before electricity travels through the cables in the step up transformer potential difference goes up current goes down leading to your power staying constant whilst in the step down transformer potential difference goes down current goes up and the power stays constant which takes place after the electricity has traveled through the transmission cables now our national grid was set up in 1926 and then we have a we have a mains potential potential current of 230 volts which was decided in 1994 because it allows cities to share electricity at the same potential difference so many many power stations can actually support lots of different cities around the United Kingdom. Now what we know is the electrical energy is originally produced at a power station where the potential difference at the power station is 25,000 volts. The potential difference is then increased after it leaves the power station which is what the step up transformer does in the national grid. So the step up transformer raises the volt is to approximately 130,000 volts so less current is needed to transfer the same amount of power so this means a lower current passes through the grid cables so the energy losses due to the heating effect of the current are reduced to almost zero we need to lower the potential difference at the end of the grid cables before we can use the mains electricity at home so the high potential difference and low current in the transmission lines minimizes the energy transfer to the internal energy of the surroundings so the high current and so the high potential difference and low current in the transmission lines Lines increases the efficiency of our transmission. So after the electrical energy reaches the homes and buildings it needs to power, the potential difference is stepped down to 230 volts to make it safe to use at home, which is what the step down transformer does in the national grid. So in, a, in the national grid you have a power station where electricity is generated at 25,000 volts via the generator effect. A step up transformer increases the potential difference to 132,000 volts in the electrical cables. This is because if the cable has a high current it would lose a lot of energy to the internal energy of the surrounding due to resistance so you have a high potential difference and therefore low current this increases the efficiency of the electrical energy transmission then a step down transformer decreases the potential difference to 230 volts so it's safe to use at home so if we did not have transformers the high current needed to power devices will be quickly dissipated due to the high resistance in transmission cables so a current going through the transmission cable will cause energy to be lost to the internal energy of the surroundings due to resistance so a high High current leads to a high power loss, so the energy is quickly dissipated to the internal energy of the surroundings, so therefore there's no electrical energy at the output, so the device would not work. Now we know we in a, tra uh, in a national grid system, the transformer works on the principle that the efficiency of a transformer is 100%, so therefore the power in a transformer is constant, no power is lost in a transformer. So we can therefore say that inside a transformer, the power equals potential difference times by current. Remember what we said that the electrical power is constant throughout a transformer not the national grid but the transformer so what we can do is we can increase the potential difference and decrease the current and this will give a little power loss in our in our cable if we place it at that point if we then increase the current we would decrease the potential difference because the power in the transformer has to remain constant so this would give a large power loss but makes the potential difference safe to use at home so the national grid is a system of cables and transformers which transfers energy around the country so we've got in our national grid the step up transformer, the transmission cable and the step down transformer and it allows us to transfer electricity around the country with great efficiency and in addition it means that different parts of the country can share electricity with each other. Now a transformer is a device that changes that potential difference to the national grid but the transformer will only work on, di on alternating current not direct current. So in alternating current the electrons move backwards and forwards in the wire. This means the electrons stay in the same net position but they oscillate backwards and forwards. Now in the United Kingdom the electrons move backwards and forwards 50 times every second. This gives us a mains frequency of 50 Hz. Now to understand how the transformer works, 
we must know what a transformer looks like. Now, all transformers have the same basic structure. The transformers consist of a metal core in its center, and the core must be made of a soft magnet such as iron. Now, a soft magnet is a magnet which can change its magnetic field easily. Now, this is very, very important. Iron is always used as the core material because it's easily magnetized and can have a change in magnetic field. It's important to remember why the core is made out of iron. So, like we said before, we've got our core made out of a soft magnet such as iron. You then wrap a circuit around one arm of your transformer core, and this is called the primary coil. So if I have the transformer to work, the input circuit, which is connected to your uh, primary coil, must have an alternating potential difference. So you can see here, you've got your primary coil connected to your input circuit, which has an alternating potential difference. You then got a secondary coil on the other side of your transformer. Now it's important to note that the secondary coil and the primary coil wires are not electrically connected. They are separate circuits. So the secondary coil is connected to the output circuit, which we can also call the load circuit in physics. Now there we got our two separate electrical circuits. They do not uh, link to each other. So to understand how a transformer works, we consider a free electron in the primary coil wire. Now obviously in reality, there are a tremendous number of free electrons in the primary coil. Now what we know is when the electrons are moving in a current, it will also become a magnet. That is a fundamental rule of electromagnetism. All moving charged objects produce a magnetic field. Now if we have an alternating potential difference and therefore alternating current in our primary coil, this will make the magnetic field produced by the electrons alternate backwards and forwards. So our primary coil is now making a magnetic field which is alternating backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Now because the iron core is a magnet, it interacts with this primary coil's magnetic field. It's attracted and repelled by the, the, by the alternating magnetic field of the primary core. So what this does is it then for makes the primary coil have a magnetic field which also alternates at the same frequency as the current of your magnetic field in of the of the current going through the primary coil. So therefore that's very, very important. Our iron core now has an alternating magnetic field. Now this is very, very interesting because the iron core acts to amplify the alternating magnetic field lines produced in the primary coil. So this will increase the change in magnetic field lines experienced by the secondary coil. So what the iron core does is it boosts the potential difference in the secondary coil. That's gonna be very, very important for later in how the transformer works. So the iron core directs and focuses the magnetic field lines to go through that secondary coil. So what will happen is this will ensure more of the field from the primary coil goes through the secondary coil. You can also have this effect by moving the coils closer together as they're more likely to overlap with each other. So because we know our secondary coil is a conductor, it's just a wire, in this conductor there's a change in the number of magnetic field lines cut. Not because the conductor is moving, not because the wire is moving, but rather the magnetic field produced by the iron core and the primary coil is going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So what this does is this will generate a um, potential difference in the secondary coil. It's the same principle as the generators. It's the induction effect. So a change in magnetic field lines cut by the conductor produces an induced potential difference in the conductor. So in the, sec the secondary coil is a conductor, and in this conductor, there's a change in the number of magnetic field lines that pass through it. This induces a potential difference in the secondary coil via the generator effect. Now remember, the change in how many field lines the conductor cuts induces a potential difference in the conductor. So when the secondary coil is there in the transformer and there's an alternating magnetic field, there's a change in how many magnetic field lines are being cut through it, so it'll induce a potential difference in that coil via the generator effect, and then when the secondary coil is part of a complete circuit, a current is induced. So the secondary coil wire is now being influenced by the alternating magnetic field in the core, which is very, very important. That's why you need an alternating magnetic field in the core, as it allows the secondary coil to experience a change in how many magnetic field lines are cutting through it. A direct current in a transformer would lead to no potential difference in the secondary coil because there'd be no change in how many magnetic field lines are going through it. There will be some going through it, but they'd stay constant, so you wouldn't get any potential difference. You need a change in how many field lines are going through a conductor to produce a potential difference. So that's how a transformer can transform the current between the primary and secondary coil without touching. So in the 
primary coil, an alternating potential difference is produced in the primary coil, which makes an alternating current in the secondary coil, which ultimately leads to an alternating magnetic field in the core. But in the secondary coil, an alternating magnetic field in the core will then lead to an alternating potential difference in the secondary coil because you're changing how many field lines are going through that secondary coil, which then leads to an alternating current in the coil when it's part of a complete circuit. So a transformer is a device that changes the potential difference and alternating current in a system. A transformer works as an alternating current in the primary coil, produces an alternating magnetic field in the iron core, and hence in the secondary coil. This induces a potential difference across the ends of that secondary coil, as it's a conductor, as the conductor changes how many field lines it cuts, not because it's moving, but rather the magnetic field is. And this becomes an alternating current when part of a circuit. So you can summarize what happens in the transformer with the following flowchart. Now, transformers are used in the national grid to change the current and potential difference at different points. Now we can work out when we've got a step up transformer and when we've got a step down transformer by looking at the number of turns of coil in each of the primary and secondary coils in your transformer. Now the rule is the more coils or turns of wire the greater the potential difference or the voltage. This happens as there's, if there's a greater number of coils there's a greater change in the field lines cut by the transformer wire. So what happens is if there's a greater change in the number of field lines cut when the transformer uh, in the transformer wires when the magnetic field alternate it gives a larger potential difference so what we can do is we can visually identify a step up and a step down transformer by the following a step up transformer wants your potential difference to increase so therefore you need a higher potential difference in the secondary than the primary and because the number of coils tells you how much potential difference you've got the more coils the more potential difference so therefore you must have more coils on your secondary compared to your primary whilst in a step down transformer there are more turns in the primary than the secondary coil because the potential difference is going down so there's going to be less coils in that second less coils in the secondary one because there's less potential difference so remember the more coils or turns of wire the greater the potential difference and you can work out when you've got a step up transformer and when you've got a step down transformer so a basic transformer consists of a primary coil and a secondary coil wound around an iron core iron is used as it's easily magnetized now the ratio of potential differences across the primary and secondary coil depends on the ratio of the numbers of turns on each of the coils. You should be able to explain how the effect of an alternating current in one coil is inducing a current in another one using a transformer. Explain how the ratio of potential differences across the two coils depends on the ratio of the number of turns on each. And finally, calculate a current drawn from an input to provide a particular power output. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what a transformer is, detail the basic properties of a transformer, and explain how a transformer works. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on how a transformer works, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Separate Science Physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.